Atlantis ISS. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready. WPVI-TV, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Atlantis ISS for a voice check. Atlantis ISS, this is WPVI in Philadelphia. How do you hear me? Hey, we have you loud and clear on the International Space Station. Commander Chris Ferguson, we recognize you very well. You are a Philadelphia native. You have so many friends, family, and fans here in our region. Anything you'd like to say? Uh, I'd like to give a big shout out to uh, my friends at Drexel University, Archbishop Bryan High School, and of course uh, the street I grew up on, Amity Road. Hello, Northeast Philadelphia. Commander, this is your third space flight. This is your second space flight as commander, second on Atlantis. Does it ever get old? Well, I'll tell you, you know, the, the moment the hatch is open after we dock with the International Space Station and you're allowed to come in and roam around, uh, it's just like being home again. It's, uh, it's a wonderful place. It's a magical place up here. And no, I'll tell you, space flight never gets old. It's a great feeling. Commander, we know that you're a big Phillies fan, and we understand that one of the earlier flights you took up a Chase Utley jersey with you. Did you take any Philadelphia memorabilia with you this time? As a matter of fact, I did. And uh, we have stowed away uh, in the mid uh, another jersey. I'll leave that uh, name to be determined. But uh, I hope to see the Phils in the World Series, and that would be a great time to return it back to them. Copy that, Commander. Now you have your crew with you, and we see the experience of zero gravity, obviously. Uh, to the crew, do you ever get sick of the Commander talking about the Phillies in Philadelphia all the time? Yeah, as a uh, San Francisco Giants fan, I do get a little tired, but we'll let him have his way here. Uh, he's the commander after all. <laughs> that is one uh, dig into uh, a Phillies fan. Oh, boy. Uh, back to the commander, if I could. This shuttle program is ending. And as you know, NASA and Congress never went ahead to replace the shuttle with another space vehicle. Generally, how do you feel about the fact that this is coming to an end and there's nothing to replace the shuttle program? Well, first, uh, my comment on the, the fact that the shuttle program is coming to an end. I'll tell you, it's uh, from the heart of a pilot who just loves flying airplanes and basically anything that has wings, it's going to be sad to retire the shuttle. Uh, that said, it's had a very long and storied career. It's been with us since 1981. It's done tremendous things, not the least of which is build this fantastic complex that we're able to, to float around in and that humans have been living in nonstop for over 10 years now. Now that said, uh, we do, we're going to have a gap. We're going to have a time where we cannot launch, um, you know, American astronauts or any astronauts from U.S. soil, but that will come to an end uh, five, perhaps six years, hopefully before uh, some commercial companies that are working on that uh, will, uh, will give us that capability back again. So, you know, it'll be slow for a little bit, but there's still plenty for us to do at NASA. You will command Atlantis to its scheduled landing on Thursday, July 20, 21st. Will you have profound remarks once the shuttle reaches the runway? I think I'm obligated to have uh, profound remarks. Um, the, uh, originally, our landing was scheduled on July 20th, which if, uh, if my history serves correctly. It was a milestone year for landings. That's the, the day, of course, that Neil Armstrong uh, landed and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon back in 1969. So if we had landed on July 20th, I think it would have been a little bit easier. But uh, we'll work on something profound, and we promise we'll have, uh, we'll have some good words to reflect upon to remember the space shuttle program by. You will have done it three times once you do land. What is worse, going up or coming down? Well, I, I think coming down, if you had to qualify it, because we know we're leaving, um, going up is it's, <laughs> it's sure a kick in the pants. And every time I've experienced, and I think I, if I can speak on behalf of my crew, uh, every time we launch in a shuttle, there's something new. Uh, 
you know, for example, this time, I just remember it being an incredibly violent liftoff from the pad. I mean, I remember I could not read the displays. I could not even read a light that was in front of me. Um, so, uh, you know, if I had to qualify it, I'd say coming home is the sad part. Going up is the exciting part. A few moments left, a quick answer if we could. We know that you're a drummer in an astronaut rock band, which makes you the coolest astronaut ever. Do you practice your rudiments in the shuttle? Well, I think that my crewmates might argue that I'm the coolest astronaut ever, but uh, no, I don't practice my rudiments. Uh, we, have, we have a great time with the band Max-Q on the ground. We love playing for a lot of folks who support the, uh, the space program, and uh, we hope to get back together. I think we're going to have a little more time on our hands after this mission. Commander and crew, have a safe flight and a safe return to the United States. Thank you so much for talking to us here in Philadelphia. Thanks, Billy. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WPVI TV portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KYW Radio. With the duck boat killing two Hungarian students, we, we have you loud and clear deal, aboard Devlin the International Space Station. Have his Coast Guard Copy that, stand by. He revoked. Mike DiNardo, KYW News Radio. KYW News Time 810. This is day number eight of the last space shuttle mission. Shuttle Atlantis with its four astronauts blasted off from Kennedy in Florida a week ago. They're scheduled to return to Earth next Wednesday. Right now, Atlantis is docked at the International Space Station about 200 miles up over the Pacific right now. Atlantis ISS, this is KYW News Radio in Philadelphia. Do you hear us? Hello, KYW News Radio. You're aboard the space shuttle or space station and uh, docked to the space shuttle uh, about uh, over the Pacific Ocean. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. This is Carol McKenzie here at KYW News Radio. Uh, Captain Ferguson, native son of Philadelphia. Uh, Captain, you've been having some significant computer problems. How are things looking right now? Well, uh, if you're referring to our computer problems, first, the, the good news is, is we have five of them, uh, and each and every one can fly the, uh, the space shuttle just fine. It's true, we've had, uh, we've had a couple of them have given us a little bit of a hiccup. Uh, last night, one of them woke us up, and uh, we, had to, we had to work on that one a little bit, but we've got them all up and running right now, and uh, we're confident that uh, we're going to have all five for uh, re-entry uh, coming up here in a week or so. Uh, Captain Ferguson, Harry Donahue here, and uh, thanks for joining us, you and your crew. I'm not sure if we have everybody else online, but I, I know this is your third shuttle flight. What's different about this one compared to the other two? Well, that's a good question, Harry. Um, I think the, probably the, the, the biggest difference is we have a, a, a smaller crew. Um, shuttle missions typically go with a crew of six uh, or seven. And uh, by the way, we do have the rest of the crew with us uh, today if you have any questions for them. Uh, this, uh, this crew is just four, so uh, there's no less work to do. It's just that we're doing it all with, uh, with four people. So uh, we're going we're gonna to contact the astronauts' uh, pilots' union and, and see what we can have done about this. But uh, we're working really hard up here, and uh, we're getting everything done. All right, Captain. Uh, Rex Walheim, Sandy Magnus, also uh, part of that crew, and uh, understand they're with us online. Uh, maybe whoever wants to answer this question, I know you guys have uh, two iPhone smartphones up there with you. I'm wondering, reception better than it is on Earth, or how is it up in space? Actually, the reason we brought the iPhones with us, believe it or not, is uh, to use them as horizon sensors and not as... Uh, phones per se so it's sort of in the nature of an experiment although hopefully you know at some point we could uh, potentially use them for iPhones but for right now they're just going to be some sensors for us I was just wondering what kind of apps you had <laughs> up there if there were any special uh, shuttle Atlantis apps no we don't have any at the moment but you never know we have some pretty clever people that fly up here from time to time we'll have to see what they come up with I'm sure they'll come up with something soon. There's an app every second. Why not a space shuttle app? Uh, Commander, I want to ask you a little bit about your Philly connection. We know that on previous flights you've taken along a Chase Utley jersey. What did you take along this time? Anything, you know, starting with uh, T? Uh, 
Uh, yes, I did bring <laughs> something up starting with a P, and, and it is for a, uh, a key player uh, on the fills. And uh, we hope to be able to uh, take a trip up there and return it to him uh, at the World Series uh, coming up here in just a few months. So, uh, And if that doesn't happen, we'll surely get it back to him. It's some home game in the not-too-far-distant future. I'll reserve that mystery player until we, uh, until we manage to get it back to you. Oh, come on, <laughs> Commander. <laughs> Chris, uh, we, we know you're from Philadelphia, the Northeast, St. Martha's Elementary School and Archbishop Ryan High School up there on Academy Road. Uh, I was wondering, w were you a listener when we used to close schools in Philadelphia back in the day? <laughs> Every morning, my alarm would go off, and KYW News Radio would come on, and I would listen for the school closing. So I've been with you for about 50 years now, and I still listen when I come back to the Philadelphia area. And I can't help it; my mother-in-law always has KYW on. <laughs> well, we we appreciate listeners, whether they're in the Northeast or in outer space, like you are this morning. To the crew of Atlantis, from us, thanks very much. Congratulations. And, uh, well, we understand we still have another minute we or two. Do. Carol? Okay, so, Chris, we understand that you play with a rock and roll band called Max Q. So, since you're such a fan of KYW News Radio, can you sing us the jingle? There are only a few drummers who can sing well in this world, and I am not one of them. <laughs> Well, maybe All you right, can well. maybe you can give a, a, a hint to uh, somebody else on your crew up there and help them out with the old KYW jingle. KYW News Radio 1060. That was awesome. That's not bad for a <laughs> drummer awesome. or even a singer. We we really appreciate that. A uh, question for you, Sandy. Um, this this uh, shuttle brings brings the shuttle pro this um, flight brings the shuttle program to an end. Thirty years. Um, a lot of young people have been inspired by the shuttle program. So now that I guess what's going forward? What what will be the inspiration for young men and women who who have an interest in this type of work? Well, first, I'd like to point them all to the International Space Station. You know, we've had people living here for about no, a little over 10 years now, and, and we're doing all kinds of science and inst interesting technology development up here. And you get to stay here for six months when you live here, and it's a completely different experience than a shuttle mission. So that's certainly something uh, any young person should aim to do because it's, it's a really, really interesting experience. I lived here for four and a half months. And further on, we're, we're going to be moving out of low Earth orbit now. You know, the shuttle is designed to work in low Earth orbit. And so we're going to be building vehicles that can go beyond that to the moon or Mars or an asteroid. So that's certainly uh, on the horizons for the young people who are interested in this type of profession. All right. And you have, uh, this is day eight with the uh, shuttle Atlantis. And you are scheduled to return to Earth when next Wednesday. Is that correct, Chris? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to be early Thursday morning, if uh, if my math serves correctly. We work on a little bit of a different time clock up here, but I think it is early Thursday. All right. Well, congratulations again. We <laughs> wish you best for the remaining part of your mission, and thanks for everything you do for NASA and for the United States. Thanks to the crew, and good luck, guys. Thanks, KYW. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the KYW radio portion of the event. We will rejoin you after a brief calm drop. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. We are now back with you. Please stand by for a voice check from Reuters. Atlantis ISS, this is Irene Klotz with Reuters. How do you hear me? Hello, Irene. We have you loud and clear on the International Space Station. Thanks very much. Uh, the first two questions I have are for you, Commander. Um, when you got jarred awake last night for the computer shutdown, did it take you a few seconds to remember where you are, or does your sleep body stay with you while you, uh, your space body stay with you while you sleep? Irene, that's an excellent assessment. Uh, just like on Earth, when you wake up or somebody wakes you up in the middle of the night, you open your eyes and you wonder where you are. But uh, 
we had our gyros cage pretty quickly, and uh, the great folks on the ground helped us, uh, helped us solve the problem uh, with our general purpose computer last night. Thanks. I understand you're going to be speaking with President Obama later today. If he asked you what you think he needs to do to keep the space program relevant in people's lives, what would you tell him and why? Well, I think uh, probably number one on the, uh, on the list would be the, the source of inspiration that uh, doing amazing things up in space provides for uh, young men and women. Um, I, I became involved in the space program because I remember watching Neil Armstrong walk on the moon in, in 1969, and it was just through following the Apollo program and the Gemini program that I developed just a, a keen interest in science and math and flight. And uh, it just it propelled me on a career that took me through naval aviation and then on to the, the space program. So if for no other reason, uh, we, need, we need to, to inspire uh, generations that, that will follow us to do wonderful things like this. And plus, we need to explore. We're, we're, we're explorers by nature. We need to leave low Earth orbit again and, and go back to the moon or an asteroid or Mars. We need to have a destination. It's in our destiny. Thank you. Um, for Sandy. Can you paint us a little word picture of what the ISS looks like with all the stuff you've brought uh, floating around there and uh, the rooting around to find the old equipment to come back home? Sorry about that, Irene. In a word, it's crowded up here. Uh, almost every module has these white, uh, we call them cargo transfer bags or CTBs. They're uh, stuck with bungees to the front of panels. The PMM, which is the permanent uh, stowage module that was brought up a couple flights ago, if you look in through the hatch, the PMM, all you will see are white bags stuck to walls because there's not enough space for some of the things that we brought up to go behind the racks or behind or inside the stowage area. So it's sort of a sea of white bags floating around, and we're hoping to help straighten it up a little bit before we leave. Thank you. Um, for Rex, about a week and a half before you launched uh, the first module of uh, China's space station reached the launch site, uh, if they're able to get it into orbit and to staff it, uh, don't you think it'd be kind of weird to ignore them in orbit? Oh, absolutely. You know, it. Uh, I think uh, in space is one of the uh, biggest international brotherhoods they have. You know, here we are, a crew of uh, of, of different countries. We have, uh, you know, American astronauts and, and Russian astronauts and Japanese astronauts. Oh, we all work together as one big team. We work together. We solve problems together. We laugh together. We eat together. It is the best example of international cooperation I know of, and it's at the working level, and I think that kind of uh, works its way up to, to other parts of the country. So um, China being in space, I think, is a great thing. I think the more nations that get in space, the, uh, the better cooperation we'll have with each other. Thank you. Um, for Doug, how comfortable are you that the ISS is going to be the human, uh, U.S. human spaceflight program for the next decade or so? Oh, completely. Uh, you know, we've got some great folks that work in the uh, International Space Station program, and, uh, you know, there's been just extensive planning to get the uh, station in, in, in this posture for the next uh, decade. Uh, we've got several automated vehicles that can resupply. We've got commercial providers that are going to be coming online in a year or so to provide uh, cargo as well, and eventually uh, crew support uh, taking us back and forth. So. Uh, the ISS is in great hands. It's a great crew on board, and, uh, you know, the future couldn't look any brighter. Thanks. Uh, also for you, um, I was just wondering if you were surprised that you launched on the first try, considering the, the weather at KSC and then that last-minute glitch with the um, O2 vent arm. Yeah, I uh, I had thought I had brought my uh, 127 Karma along with me there for a few, uh, you know, when we walked out and, uh, you know, while we were strapping in and we were getting updates uh, while we were laying on our backs and then uh, and then we we got the go and uh, and then the next thing happened at 31 seconds. So I was thinking, oh, no, but it, it just worked out so good. Um, we couldn't be happier. It was great for our, our family, our friends and all the guests. And then the uh, I guess close to a million people that were watching us. So uh, it's always great to launch on the first first try. And uh, I'm glad to finally be able to say I did that. Thanks. And for any of you, uh, have you have any of you guys run into Robonaut? And if so, what's it doing? Thank you.
ro- we we have uh, Robonaut is hiding <laughs> because of all the all the company we brought him in the sea of bags, but uh, he'll probably come out to do some work after we're gone. Thanks. That's all the time we have. Appreciate your time and uh, safe landings. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you, WPVI-TV, KYW Radio, and Reuters. Atlantis ISS, we are now resuming operational audio comms. Great, great job, guys.